Running such a farm is no mean task. The use of technology and mechanization is key when it comes to reducing the cost of production, as Naftali explains. We are only five uh, operating team, only five people, yeah. And uh, that's made easy by mechanization. So we realize that if we are doing it by hand, you can imagine how much labor you could have uh, you could have required to do, like to run this operation. So mostly mechanization is the way to go because of uh, labor and also the cost of production, it reduces it by, by far. And uh, another thing, uh, um, there are so many ways of making silage. People make the pit silage and uh, we've gone for the round bales. We realize with the pit silage, when a customer wants to buy the silage, he can't keep it for long. If you want to feed it to the cows, you buy and you feed. But in this case, you can buy your silage and keep it for a month or two, or even a year if you want. From planting, we plant uh, an average of 11, kil uh, 11 kilograms per hectare, which we do using our precision uh, planters. So you get it very accurate, as you can see in the, the rows. Uh, they are, like they are straight, and the spacing is uniform from, from, from the first row to the last row. Second thing we realize we use uh, GPS, which is which uses a real kinetic energy RTK. So any time that you are planting, you are going to use uh, RTK, and you are also doing it under controlled traffic. So all our machineries will always uh, use the same. We can say the same roads. We have the same roads inside our field, so there is no much compaction. So when when you start from the planter to the bell wagon of which you're going to see later we they all follow the same traffic uh, traffic routes in the field so from planting we give it around uh, 60 days when we get to around uh, one to two meters high and depending also on the condition because you can't cut when it's too wet so we wait until uh, all the machines can come into the field and that's when we come in and cut and from cutting we leave it to wilt for around 12 to 24 hours depending on the size of these stems and the reason we wilt is to lose as much moisture as we can and that will make sure that um, the sugar concentration in the stems is good for ensiling. So you will realize we don't use any molasses in our sorghum. The sugars in the stems of the forest sorghum is, uh, is enough to help in the ensiling process. So after wilting, that's when we come in with the bella. And the bella, we make a bell switch around um, 600 to 700 kgs. And it's, um, we do it with a reason. A cow will always feed on around 20 kgs of uh, forage per day. So if you have 600 kgs, that means it's a bell per cow per month. Yeah, so if you have one bell, you can feed it to one cow for a whole month. Yeah. So from uh, the belling, so you go to wrapping, and wrapping we do it in uh, in the silage yard uh, where we were a few minutes ago. And there is a reason why we do it in the silage yard. To previously used to do it in the field, the wrapping and storage we used to store in the field. But around here we have uh, so many uh, rodents. We have uh, animals. We have. Um, yeah, mostly rodents and animals. When we used to store in the field, we used to get baboons, they come and tear the rapage. We used to get rodents come into the forage, and that really affects the quality of the silage, because when you get air get into the bales, they go bad very fast. And so we lost about 200 tons of forage while storing in the field. So we had to invest, like use about 4.5 million to set up that yard. And that's why we have to, you must make sure that the bells are safe from uh, from rodents or, or any other animal. If you keep them airtight in the yard, you can get them go up to 18 to 24 months. That's two years. Yeah. You realize also with the wrapping we do with the white papers and that's helping the reflection of the sunlight and the heat and that will also help in um, like in keeping the silage for as long as you want. If you haven't been used to such kind of farming operations, it is quite a sight to witness. 
precision timing of the weather is however very important in all the operations. you realize you also pick some mud. Uh, that helps also in conservation of fuel. You can imagine driving when it's too mud in the field. Uh, it's going to be hard and you are going to be using so much fuel at that time. Like this crop was planted in short rains. So we've received about a 60 millimeters of rainfall in this crop, of which 60 millimeters, uh, that's like, a, uh, it's good, but not enough. Yeah, and it uh, so with the long rains, we'll you know we have uh, October, November, December, so we have that break in January where it's sunny, so that time we can get in and cut January, February, but mostly we'll cut in February so that we wait for the long rains in March. So the long rains will go for uh, let's say April, March, May, and part of June. So when we are through with the sh uh, long rains, we can get in and cut and it's very unusual to get uh, rains here in July, August and September so that time it's good for cutting. All the machines there is no machine that is locally available but we have local dealers but some of the machines you have to source them yourself from uh, from their manufacturers yeah the machine we get from Germany there are some that we've gotten from um, from we have some from Germany and we have one from uh, countries running from my mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but mostly they are not, you, you don't get them locally, you have to import them. Naftali explains some of the necessary practices they undertake to ensure that the food that they produce and sell are of high quality. Everything we do, we do, it's not that we know but we are still learning. Initially we, we, we thought maybe the more it grows, the better. But you realize the more it grows, you lose the nutritional value and you also lose the digestibility. The animals, because the, the lignin will become like stems. They'll be hard to, hard to chew to, to the animals. So you have to monitor. You have to monitor every... When you're a farmer, you have to go to your field every day. Yeah. And you realize we also have uh, our own lab where we test the nutritional value. So you will know the right stage of cutting and the right time. Initially we thought cutting from early in the morning at 6 is good because we are saving time. But we realized at that time the plants are not, uh, the photosynthesis is not taking place at that time. So all the nutrients are in the roots. And we want the nutrients to be in the stems like the sugars because the sugars are going to help in the ensiling process. So you need uh, to do it at the right time. Yeah. So the cutting, you have to know at what time of the day should I be cutting. Is it early in the morning? Is it during the day or late in the evening? And that's part of uh, learning. Every farming venture has its own challenges. And as Naftali narrates, pests and diseases are their biggest menace. The larger the plantation, the bigger the losses. So, who are Ausquest farm customers? In, term of, in terms of our customers, uh, we supply local people. When I say local, we have uh, Machakos County. We have people from Kajiado County. We have people who come from as far as uh, Nanyuki, from Uruti, for the silage. And um, we don't limit our sales. We can sell uh, from as low as a bell to as much as you want. Yeah, so we don't uh, we don't limit ourselves to small scale farmers or to large scale farmers. We want everyone to benefit. And as I said, um, we want to increase our acreage of a forage. We initially we started with 50 hectares. Currently we are doing uh, 169 hectares, but we are looking at doing up to a thousand hectares of forage. That means that that's still not sufficient to all the farmers in the 
like in the country or in this locality. But we cushion our farmers. Like when we start selling, we have uh, customers and we have preferred customers. To our preferred customers, those are people who are relying fully on the silage. And we must ensure they have forage uh, 365 days a year at the same price. Yeah. The price is at 12 shillings per kg, which is affordable. Join us next week for another exciting show of Dairy Farms.